Okay, so today we're going to do a uh, log and exponential inverse. Step one, we always go into switch because every single time you see the keyword inverse, we're just gonna switch. And we're gonna solve for y. That's the step, let's do it. Now, keep in mind, if you see f of x, make sure you change them to y. That's the very first step. So I'm gonna rewrite this equation right here. y equal seven to the power of x plus three. I like to make a table, just remind me about the opposite. Opposite of addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and opposite of expo e log. So how can we do this? I'm going to step one, switch. So y become x and x become y. So x equal seven, this is y plus three, right? And then now we go into solve for y, that's the step two. I want to highlight my goal so I know this is what I'm trying to solve for. So step two, I'm going to solve for y, meaning to get y by itself. So solve for y. If I want to get y by itself, um, I really want to get rid of the plus three. However, the y right now is on the top, they're in exponential. So we have to do the opposite. So opposite of exponential is log. So I'm going to do log. I start with the base is seven. We keep the same base and we're just gonna switch. So the x gonna go over to this spot. And then the y plus three, the whole thing, the whole group, right? Cause they go together. It's gonna go over here, y plus three. So what we just did is that we bring them so that they can be instead of upstairs, they'll go downstairs now so we can talk about it. At this point, I'm still continue highlight my goal because I will not happy until I have my goal by itself. So I wanna have y by itself by get rid of plus three. Opposite of addition, going to be subtraction. So at this point, I'm going to minus three on both sides. I will minus three here and minus three here. Now, remember, you are minus three on this one, you are minus three for this entire thing. So it's not like seven minus three, but minus three for entire thing here. So your answer look look like this. Y equal log seven of X is up here. And the minus three is gonna be on the outside because they are two separate things, right? So what gonna be our final answer? Um, it's gonna be f negative one of x. You can do this at an extra step if you could like. So right now we're finding the inverse function, right? So this is the inverse notation. It's gonna be log seven x minus three. Now we can go ahead and check the answer, but I should also, I highly recommend you before you check for your answer, always do the process of elimination, even doing this before we start the question. We know that the base right here is seven. So right away we can cross out answer choice B because this is base two. We can also cross out answer choice D because it's also base two. Also, if you look at this, this is plus three. So we know opposite of plus three have to be minus three. So we can also cross out this answer because it's also plus three. So leaving out a two answer left to even guess. If we're not sure how to do this, at least we have a 50 chance now just to get the right answer. Uh, but as you can see, the answer go into B, C, correct? Because we have um, log base seven of X minus three, and they're separate on the outside. They're not in the same side. Uh, they're not in the same parentheses. So it can look like that. Okay. So that's a question number one. Let's do a few more so that we can feel comfortable about it. Okay, question number two. Uh, let's do them and the keyword right here is inverse by the inverse function or you also see the inverse notation uh, It's telling us that we are trying to find the inverse, right? Let's do process of elimination first. This is ln So right away we know the base is e. I can cross out the answer that doesn't have a e. There you go This is plus three. So opposite going to be minus three So we can cross out the answer that not minus three. So this one and this one doesn't have any minus three Wow, so you only have two choice left to think about. That's a lot, a lot faster, right? So let's go ahead and get it together. Step one, we, uh, we always have to change this to y, like rewrite the equation. So y equal ln x plus three. I like to put an imaginary e 
right here because I know this is Bay E. And I like to make my table opposite of addition, subtraction, opposite of multiplication, division, opposite of expo, in law. So at, up right now, uh, we already have step one, switch, X and Y. So right here we got Y, let's see, X equal LN. I keep the E right there. It's not mathematically correct, but I just wanna remind myself, well, my base is E. So that's gonna be Y plus three, right? After we are done switching, we're gonna solve for Y. I like to highlight my goal to telling me, hey, I'm not gonna be happy until I reach my goal. So I wanna have Y by itself. What should I get rid of? I really hope to get rid of plus three, but I can't because they stuck together. So I have, I, we are right now in lock form. So do the opposite of lock by doing L, um, exponential. So the base is still E, right? So we start with Bay E. I keep them right here. And we just have to switch. So we're gonna go up here now. That's gonna be E to the power of X. And then the Y plus three gonna go over here. What we have right now is, it's again, trying to solve for Y by itself. All I want is to have Y by itself. So simply get rid of plus three by doing subtracting threes again. So I will subtract three on both sides. This is going to give me with Y left. And then it's equal E to the power of X. Remember, this is me and this is you. We are two separate things. So you have to put a separate E on the outside. And it's leaving you at this answer, um, knowing how this is e to the power of x, this is minus three. They are two separate things, right? So that's why this is gonna give you the answer, not the other one. The other one telling you that they are together, you see? So that gonna be e. Okay, I hope that makes sense for you. Let's pause a moment and give it a try for the last one, number three, uh, and hope that will make sense for you. Okay, question number three, what do we do? Inverse, so first we do y, so y equal log x plus five. Always rewrite the question was really have. Log uh, x of five we know, if we don't write the number, that's the base 10. So automatically can I cross out what answer that not base 10? B and C, right? Let's see plus five, opposite of plus five is so minus five. They both have minus five, so we don't know which one is the answer. So let's check it out, let's do it. So step one, I'm not gonna write it anymore at this point, I hope you got them. So y equal x. So x equal block. This is gonna be x, we change it to y plus five. We can put in a number 10 because we know this is log by 10. So to put it at a 10 at an imagination. So here we go. And I'm going to have equal this is 10, right? Oh, we, we got a question here. Very good question, actually. Um, I want to have y by itself. So in here, the phi doesn't go together with the y, it's separately. So technically, if I want to get to y, I need to get rid of what first? Compared to the other question, the y are together like this. They are together like log 10x. But here, the five are separately, they are not together. So how can we do that? So what we can do here in this question, actually, before we're gonna target the Y, we have to re get rid of five first, just by simply doing the opposite of subtracting. So I will minus five on both sides first. So you see, it's a little bit different, but knowing where we are is on way half. And I will bring down this question at log 10 and Y. 5 minus 5 is gone, x minus 5, we still have that. We're good, right? Now, at this point, what do we want to get rid of? I still want y, and right now we are exponential. So in order to get rid of x, I mean, we are log. To get rid of log, we do exponential. So I'm going to do y, and I'll just switch it mm, by doing 10, the base is 10, and I switch it. So we're going to go up here, see x to the power of 5 equal 1. So y gonna go over here, so I have y. And I'm done, yeah, simple as that. Why do the, the whole thing go up here? Because x minus five, they are together. So when you switch in, x minus five go up here. 
given me at the answer with x minus 5 together, so that's going to be a. Okay, hope you are still doing okay at this point. Uh, make sure you pause that so you can see it and practice. Finally, state the best for last. We have the last question here. That's E, finding the inverse still. Um, let's do our little drill. I always cross out this u and uy, rewrite the equation, y equals two to the power of x minus three. And you can see the minus three are not together with the x is down here. So they are two separate items. So make sure you write them separately. Um, this is base two. Hmm, we are kind of unlucky. All of them are base two, so we can't. Opposite of minus three, we know that's a plus three. So what answer choice should we cross out that not having plus three? This one and this one. So we still have 50 chance. Uh, what do you think the answer is gonna be? Step one, let's switch it. So x equal two to the power of y minus three is not together. You see, this is step one. Step two, I'm gonna solve for y. I always like to highlight my target so I can see what target I need to deal with. Now I need to get rid of minus three and how? To get rid of minus three, to get y by itself because they are together and two to the power of y, but the minus threes are not together with this. So I have to get rid of minus three first by simply plus three on both sides. This will give me x plus three. This will give me two to the power of y. So I already have y by itself. So how can I get y by itself? I'm going to switch it um, by doing opposite of exponential is log. So you can start in any way you want. So right here, you can put log by two, and we just have to switch it. So what's gonna go up here is the x plus three, the whole thing, the whole group, because we switch the, the sign to so this side and this side. So x plus three gonna go here and the y gonna go over there by itself. And that's what we want. And that is our goal to solve for y. So at this point, we did it. Oh. So the answers in here are gonna be with one. And with that, we have the x plus three on the top together. So it's gonna be a, right? Cause it's together. Okay, so that is how you find inverse function. I really hope that helped. So I have two graphs right here and we're gonna talk about each of them. Um, so first let's talk about exponential. How do we know this is exponential? Sometimes when we're not sure what it is, just read it out loud. Like I always talk to myself and it's really help. So this is three to the power of X. We hear three to the power of X. So this is exponential. We hear that word, right? And over here we see log base three of X. So that's the uh, we see the word log. So this is the log form. And you can compare both of them. They both have something the same, all about that base. The base is three for both of them. So I'm gonna put it right here. It doesn't matter how the format change, the base always stay the same. We will talk about uh, all of them. So first is the x-intercept. X-intercept is where it crops with the x-axis. And we see the graph right here, do not crop through the x-axis. It go really close to the x-axis, but it do not cross over, so x-intercept is none. But this graph, do they crop to the x-axis? They do, it's right here. So the x-intercept is one comma zero. I use one comma zero, right? How about the y-intercept? This function does crop through the y-axis at one, um, zero comma one, on x is zero and the y is one. So that's e our y-intercept. So that's going to be one, zero. This graph doesn't crop through the y-axis at all. They only should go really close, but if not, so the y-intercept in this is gonna be none. How about domain? Um, the function go all the way from the left and keep extending all the way to the right. So for that, the domains is all real number. So we can put X belong to R, all real number. How about the range? The range is everything that you can see. If we keep going, the range start from right here, right? The line. This is a horizontal line. So I'm gonna call them, hey, horizontal asymptote y equals zero. The domain, the range is everything above it. So that's gonna be y greater than zero. Asymptote y equals zero here. Over here, we do have an um, asymptote, vertical asymptote, and that's going to be vax x equal. 
and x equals zero. The domains is everything to the right, zero, one, two, three, four, five. So the domains is x greater than zero. And the range is everything, start from the bottom to the top. The function keep go from the bottom all the way to the top. So that's going to be y belong to r, all the real number. If we are looking at both functions right here and may a compare, we will see our asymptote are switching y equals zero. And right here we have x equals zero. They switch y is an x. You see that? And then we look, let's take a look a few more. The x intercept right here is none, and the y intercept right here is in none. So it's switching again. It seems to me that the x take the row uh, of y over here. And right here is the y intercept is one, zero. It's switching to zero. Um, um, oh, I make a mistake right here. This is zero, one. So the y intercept here is zero, one. And we switch to one, zero. You see how x and y, let's check a, take a look. Right here is zero, one, right? Over here is one, zero. So the points is kind of switch. The domains right here is x belong to r. It go into the range. So it x and y switches again. The range become the domain on this side. So any kinds of relationship like that, we call them inverse. And exponentials and log are two opposite functions, so we call them inverse function. So as you can see right here, now I'm gonna put all the two graphs together so we can experiment them as well. The rest one right here is the exponential. So the rest one is expo. And the blue one we have e um, log, right? So let's go ahead and make a table. For the blue one, we have, this is x, this is y, and we have right here, this is one, zero. For the red one, I mean, my bad, it's not still a blue one, nine, two. For the rest one, we have those two points right here, e, zero, one, and two, nine. So as you can see right here, when you look at them, you can see that the points are flipped, zero, two, zero, two. The x become the y, and one, nine, one, nine. Y become x, so the point, x become y, y become x. And if you look at the graph, the graph I also flip and reflect over the lines in the middle right here, we call them lines of reflection. y equal x. But you see how the graph reflected right here, uh, reflected right here, they flip over that. So that is an inverse relationship. The function notation is f of x, then the inverse function notation is the opposite of that, so f negative one of x. So keep that in mind as well. But doesn't matter what kinds of function notation, f of x or f negative one of x, they both mean exactly the same thing, x, y. Okay, so I really hope that makes sense to you regarding the graph, regarding how the point looks, 